My name's Sam Boone and this presentation explains how commercial RAM producers can buy signet recorded blue faced Leicester RAMs using estimated breeding values and breeding indexes. There have been a number of changes in the recent analysis, but the thing that's consistent within blue faced Leicester recording is the progress that's being made for traits like growth rate, carcass attributes, as well as the maternal characteristics that are passed on to the mule ewe, such as genetics for milk production and uh, prolificacy. We're going to talk about how to interpret breeding values, recent changes to the signet analysis, why genetic improvement is important, and then where you can find more information. So what do Blueface Leicester breeders do when they performance record? Well, first of all, they record information at lambing time on the number of lambs that are born uh, and successfully reared recording information about mum and dad as you would with any breed society so that we can track performance through the generations. Lambs are weighed at eight weeks of age and that tells us something about the animal's genetic potential for growth and also the genetic potential uh, of its mum in terms of her milking ability. Then lambs are ultrasound scanned uh, and weighed again later in life so we get an indication of carcass attributes through the muscle and fat depth measurements that are taken. And then finally, breeders have the opportunity to supply ewe weights and body condition score values for the ewes as they're going to the ram. We know as we select for lamb growth rates that ewe weights will tend to increase. By actually measuring and monitoring ewe weights, we can actually select for greater efficiency within the flock. So this is what we actually do with the data. We've got pedigree of information on the lamb and obviously all of its relatives going back many generations. And we've got performance data. So information about how quickly it's grown, information about muscle and fat characteristics. That data is then analyzed within our evaluation and it takes into account a number of aspects of performance. So the non-genetic ones, the age of the animal, the sex, the flock that it's been in, and obviously we have different feeding regimes in different flocks, uh, fostering and, and ET would also be part of that picture. So we take into account all of these non-genetic influences and what you're left with after that is the genetic variation. And that genetic variation is expressed as estimated breeding values, and also breeding indexes. And in addition to that, we produce accuracy values. So the breeding index pulls together a number of different individual EBVs for different traits to create a single figure on which to rank the sheep. The accuracy values tell us how much is known about that animal's record. So here's a set of breeding values for a ram, the sort of thing you might see at a sale. Uh, the EBVs that are shown are expressed in real units of measurement. So a scan weight of 1.76 means that animals got the breeding potential to be 1.76 kilos heavier than a ram with an EBV of zero. And obviously half of that is going to be passed on to his progeny because he passes half of his genes on to his lambs. Positive figures tending to indicate more of an attribute. The slight negative here for fat depth indicates that this ram would also be slightly leaner uh, than the average within the breed. And then you've got the overall blue face Leicester index shown right at the bottom. Next to the EBVs, you'll often see an accuracy figure. So this is probably for a shearling ram that's been fully measured. Uh, so it has fairly similar accuracies for its growth and carcass traits. And then finally, you'll often see that information presented on a chart. And the beauty of the chart is at a glance, you can see how well an animal rates within the breed. So I can quickly see that this is a really good animal for maternal ability, above average for litter size. So his daughters will be more prolific than average, really quite good in terms of muscling without being a particularly large sheep. So uh, relatively fast early growth rates, but maybe not massive in terms of you mature size, but really well muscled. And that's led to the, the good index of this animal pulling all of that information together. How have our analyses changed this year? Well, first of all, we've now got a monthly analysis. So breeders are only uh, 30 days away from getting a fresh set of uh, breeding values when they submit data or weights to, to us. We've moved the 
a way we assess carcass traits to a weight adjusted basis and I'll explain that in a moment. We've brought in new maternal traits for attributes like ewe longevity and lamb survival and the ewe weights and body condition score traits that I talked about earlier. We've updated all of our breeding indexes to take into account some of these new approaches. And with all those changes going on, we've rebased the EBVs. So when looking at breeding values, you must use a new breed benchmark to see what is now average top 25% or top 10% within the breed. So weight adjusted traits. Let's just think of a high muscle depth sheep for a moment. When we're using our ultrasound scanner, it might get a deep muscle depth just because it's big. Equally, it might have a really deep eye muscle relative to its size. Now, we already know which are the genetically big sheep because they have a very high scan weight EBV. So surely we should have a muscle depth that didn't just tell us which sheep are big, but it was actually independent of growth and told us which were the sheep that were really well muscled relative to their size. And that's particularly important when you bear in mind that most lambs are killed not on the basis of their age, but on the basis of them reaching a certain weight. We want to know how much muscle will they have at that killing weight. So the new approach has a much greater commercial focus. It's a much better indicator of muscling and fatness and leanness at a fixed weight, and particularly useful in maternal breeds because it means we can increase carcass uh, attributes without increasing you mature size. So in summary, EBVs are a really good guide for assessing genetic merit. The blue faced Leicester EBVs have changed, building on a lot of improvement in the past, and you should really get hold of a new breed benchmark to see how the animals you're looking at rate to, to the rest of the breed. And when buying rams, focus on your breeding objectives because you may want to do different things in your flock to another commercial flock, and then think about the EBVs that are going to have the biggest impact within your flock. For more information, lots of information that's out there and available. First of all, think about your flock breeding objectives. Identify the EBVs of importance and get hold of a benchmark. And then head to the internet. So the Signet website um, enables you to search for individual animals, search for the best animals within the breed. There's a flock finder that will show you flocks near you. And also there's a page showing sheep that are currently for sale. Uh, producers can print charts and catalogues directly from the website and there's a number of booklets from both AHDB and Signet to help you find the best performing breeding lines. Finally, we ought to remember that it's important that rams are fit for purpose. The genetics are fine, but if the ram doesn't have a long uh, productive life, then that's not a good investment in your flock. So health status of the ram is extremely important and structural soundness is clearly vital. Um, for you to get that good return on investment.